Industry 4.0 is here, my friends. So I guess we need to build all new industrial plants and factories from the ground up. Grab a shovel. It's time to break some ground. <laughs> okay, that's absolutely not feasible. We all know that retrofitting is the best way to get our industrial designs into the new era of Industry 4.0. But how do we effectively and quickly add IIoT capabilities to our existing industrial ecosystem? With rapid prototyping, that's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Industry 4.0 has brought a lot of exciting innovation to manufacturing and industrial factories throughout the world. But getting your next IIoT design from concept to reality can be a challenging process. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Aditha Madanahali from Worth Electronic and I explore how Worth Electronic can help you jumpstart your next IIoT design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about this topic from Worth Electronic. Hi, Adi. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to the talk today. Excellent. Me too. And we're talking about Industry 4.0 today. So, Adi, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? Today, we'll begin by setting up the context for our talk today by talking a little bit about the history of how we evolved into Industry 4.0 and how IoT relates to Industry 4.0. Moving on from this, we'll get a little bit technical by talking about some system architecture of how a typical industrial IoT system looks. And maybe it will be more relatable to our listeners by when we talk about this with the help of an example. Further, let's talk about some of the challenges that are involved in development of an industrial IoT solution. We are going to present how rapid prototyping helps us overcome these challenges. We're also going to present a few tools from Vyot Electronic that helps in rapid prototyping for industrial IoT solutions and present some use case examples that we have realized using these tools for industrial IoT. Excellent. So Adi, to start things off, can you set the stage for us? How did we get to Industry 4.0? Like we follow in software, this is the versioning that has been taking place. It's more like the generations that happened over a period of time. The first industrial revolution happened in the 18th century. So this was powered by steam engine, and this is kind of later dubbed as Industry 1.0, so the version 1.0. Moving on, in the 19th century, with the invention of electricity and electrification in the assembly line, where we talk about a lot of revolution in the automotive industry, that was dubbed as Industry 2.0, so where we had a lot of assembly line manufacturing optimization and electrification processes. Further, during the 20th century, we had a lot of automation in the industry and manufacturing sectors with use of programmable logic circuits, the PLCs, and so on. And this is kind of dubbed as Industry 3.0. And finally, we arrive at the present day where we talk about Industry 4.0. This has been happening over the last, let's say, five to 10 years already, but actually really taking shape with the advent of IoT and, and a lot of other technologies that we are going to talk about today. And this has been driven by data, basically. So when we talk about Industry 4.0, we talk a lot about data as the driving force for optimization of industrial processes. So that's how we got into Industry 4.0. Excellent. So where does IoT fit in here? So with Industry 4.0, as you can see here in the slide from Boston Consulting Group, a lot of different technologies play a very important role in optimization of industrial processes, one of which is Internet of Things. So basically, what happens is in order to optimize, as I said earlier, we need data. And where do we get the data from is where the Internet of Things comes into play. So Internet of Things plays a very important role in actually generating the data that is necessary for all the other technologies that are involved in optimizing industrial processes. So this is where Internet of Things plays a very important role in generating and storing and kind of presenting the data to be able to be used by other technologies to enable Industry 4.0. So Adi, IoT can mean a lot of things. How do you define an IoT application? IoT is often used to mean a lot of different things. 
So let me set up the context for today's talk. Let us consider some of the most popular IoT applications, for example, industrial applications, farming, smart city application, a smart home application, and so on. So what typically IoT means is providing smartness to any application. So any application, when added with IoT, results in a smart application. So smart farming, smart industry, smart city, and smart home, so on. Moving on to the next slide, as you can see, whenever we have an application, we enable it with IoT. For example, in this case, what does IoT mean? For us, IoT means sensors, which enable acquisition of data from the physical environment, transmitting this data over a wireless connectivity link onto a data platform, which we call it here as IoT platform, wherein the data can be used to do a lot of analysis, which results in a lot of value additions. For example, process automation and optimization, safety and security, predictive maintenance, quality control, remote monitoring and control, and so on which in turn leads to overall betterment of the application. So that the application is smart by using IoT. This is how we are going to talk about IoT overall in today's context. So a big trend in IIoT these days is making old machines smart or retrofitting old machines with new capabilities. So what exactly does that look like? Retrofitting is a really good example of how we can make an application smart using IoT. So let's consider an old machine, for example, typically a cutting machine in an industrial environment. This machine is probably 10 to 15 year old, but still works, works fine. Investing in a new machine that really connects to the internet would mean a lot. But still, we want to optimize a lot of industrial processes for which we can use retrofitting. So basically, we fit the machine with sensors and a wireless connectivity capability so that a lot of uh, data can be acquired from the machine and sent over to a data platform wherein it is analyzed and processed in order to provide a lot of new insights to the user. Basically making an old machine that is really good and working more optimized and what you can call it as a smart machine. So this is really a good example wherein we can show that adding IoT to an existing system makes it really smart and provides a lot of value addition. Cool. Now, what all constitutes an IoT system? As you can see in this slide, there are a lot of components that constitute an IoT system. So let's dig a little bit in detail about how a typical IoT solution would look like. A typical IoT solution would consist of sensors and actuators that interact with the physical world. Basically, for example, you can consider a temperature sensor that reads the temperature value and converts it into a digital value, which can be then used for further processing. On the other hand, an actuator can be a little switch that can uh, turn on and turn off water or something like this. Data that is generated from the sensors needs to be somehow transmitted to the cloud. So this is where the role of wireless connectivity comes in. So wireless connectivity basically is the medium through which the data from the sensor goes onto the cloud. You might also require certain gateways. These are basically translation layers that translate the data from the hardware onto the software onto the cloud. Further, you have a data platform where all the data that are generated from the sensors are stored, aggregated, analyzed, and presented to the user using a user interface, using data visualization, where command and control of the entire system can be achieved. As you can see in this whole architecture, it starts very low in the embedded domain where we deal with low processing power, small size, or low installation effort, and so on on to the cloud domain where you have really no limit of processing power, it's highly scalable and flexible and where you can do a lot of complicated things. So as you can see, the whole IoT solution is really broad in certain ways. So it involves very low level hardware related embedded domain up to a cloud service that is running somewhere with multiple gigabytes of processing power and so on. So this is a huge as well as a wide domain which means that it requires a lot of different expertise in order to be implemented correctly. You guys recently did a survey about IoT, right? What all did you find out? That's correct. So as I explained a little bit about the complexity involved in IoT, so we wanted to find out what interests our customers, our target audience with respect to IoT. One of the questions was, how intensively are you dealing with the topic of IoT? So in this case, as you can see, the concentration of a uh, number of people actually dealing with IoT off late is increasing. So this is the trend. 
we have seen post pandemic that a lot of people, a lot of projects that were kind of on hold have been now pushed onto full speed. So a lot of new IoT projects coming up. Further, the question of how important IoT is in terms of innovation in the company is also, as you can see, a lot of interest there. So that it's considered as one of the most important innovative topics in the group. So Adi, what did you discover was the biggest design challenge in this realm? Actually, when we spoke to our customers, so what we found out was most of our customers want or need to connect their sensors and devices or machines, but they don't know really how to do this. They have no idea about radio, software, hardware, and, and they don't want to bother about it. So basically, the demand from what we found out was that there needs to be really a seamless way of bringing data from the physical world onto the cloud platform without having to deal with a lot of intricacies that are involved in implementing such a solution. So what solution would you recommend for this issue? Whenever we talk about creating a solution for this problem, the engineering way of approaching any problem is prototyping. So you just consider that you have a problem and you see, okay, let's see what we can do about it. And you build a, a model, you build a prototype, you build something in order so that you have something tangible to actually start testing the solution. So what we offer is a secure high performance solution for rapid prototyping from sensor to cloud, wherein we take the customer by hand and start connecting devices and machines in a very secure and time efficient way so that you can actually start getting a stream of data onto the cloud platform within a few hours so that you can start measuring, you can start getting a new insights into the data and so on, and then go ahead with whatever the end solution that needs to be implemented. So our solution or proposal for such complex applications is typically rapid prototyping. So prototyping will help a lot in getting an idea of what needs to be done in the end application. So what does Worth have in particular to help me with prototyping? Okay, in order to enable rapid prototyping, Jet Electronic has come up with the feather wings. So feather wings are very commonly used prototyping standard, you can say this. We actually comply with the feather wing format from Adafruit, wherein we have brought our components, which is sensors, as well as wireless connectivity and sensors, onto the feather wing format, which means that in order to build any IoT application, we can combine sensors as well as wireless connectivity feather wings together with any feather microcontroller. So you have an IoT system with zero hardware effort by just simply stacking up a few boards together. Further, we also provide firmware components out of the box, which enable development of any rapid prototype for an IoT application within a few hours. Let's talk a little bit about Adafruit and SparkFun ecosystems. Like I said, the feather wing form factor comes from basically from Adafruit. So this is very popular among electronic enthusiasts and, and hobbyists and so on. They come up with this feather form factor, which is standard. So all the boards are compatible with each other. So we have brought our components into this feather wing form factor. As you can see here, there are more than 150 different boards and extensions and accessories and so on. So you can really stack up and build up a system together within a matter of few minutes just by stacking up the boards. Further, we are also compatible with the SparkFun Electronics ecosystem, wherein you have 130 plus boards and accessories and extensions and so on, which means you can really build a very complex system exactly according to your needs, no matter whether you take sensors from us. We have a few wireless connectivity components, but usually a pro IoT solution would require more than what is present or offered by one manufacturer. So in this case, it is really easy to interoperably combine a lot of different sensors and connectivity solutions and generate exactly the application that is needed for the use case. So in this case, you can tap into this open source Adafruit SparkFun environments in order to build your own IoT solution. So Adi, can we take a closer look at Featherwings? What kind of benefits does this solution bring to the table? Sure. The Vuit Electronic Featherwings brings the components from Vuit Electronic onto the Featherwing form factor. So basically, we extend the Adafruit Featherwing ecosystem with our components. So as you can see, we can combine our Featherwing with any other Feather. So Feather is a microcontroller board, typically. So the user can consider any microcontroller board of choice. They can combine this with 
any other feather wing. So for example, we can have relays or LEDs. There is also a really cool OLED display feather wing. So you can really build a very complex application just by stacking up a few boards. Additionally, we also have the quick connector. So you can tap into the quick ecosystem and combine a few more sensors. So basically you can kickstart your complete prototyping without any hardware effort. Further, we have all our code open source on a GitHub repository, wherein you can also get the intelligence that is necessary via uh, software in order to make this system operational. Put it into simple words, Featherwing form factor is excellent for prototyping. Excellent. Now, Adi, do you have any example applications you can share? Sure. Let us discuss a few use cases that we have implemented using our Featherwings. As we discussed earlier, retrofitting is a really good example to demonstrate the benefits of using IoT. So in this case, we consider an industrial cutting machine. So this is a typical machine that cuts through a metal sheet in order to generate different shapes. As you can see on the left side of the machine, there are a lot of different tools. The motor head, which is encircled here with a red, basically moves around, picks the tool that is necessary, and then moves in a certain pre-programmed pattern in order to generate the necessary shape onto the metal sheet. So what we did was with this small box that you can see here, small enclosure you can see here, we used our uh, sensor feather wing, which consists of an acceleration sensor with a Thione feather wing, which provides a proprietary 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity link to actually measure the vibrations and transmit it locally to a gateway. So what happens here is whenever the motor is switched on and moves around, in this context, the acceleration sensor continuously detects the acceleration, data records this and transmits this over a proprietary 2.4 gigahertz wireless link onto a gateway. The whole system was powered interestingly using a solar panel. So this is a typical use case where you have an industrial cutter, although there are a lot of main sources here, it's a retrofitting application where you don't have access to power supply and so on. So it is really needs to be power efficient, so which means battery powered and also generate its own power basically using a small solar panel. We have generated an entire application just by using the feather wings and all the open source accessories that are supported by using the Adafruit form factor. When we did this, we had an initial setup where we could measure the vibrations and we really generated a lot of interesting data. In this case, after seeing the acceleration data, the request was, okay, it's interesting. Maybe we should also do the current which is where we also tapped into the main power source. As you can see, there are a couple of ferrites that are tapped onto the main power source and we use open source SparkFun analog to digital converters in order to measure current that is drawn by the machine itself. The result of the whole exercise was that by combining the acceleration data with the current data, it was possible using, of course, a lot of machine learning algorithms and so on to determine different processes. In this case, here is a simple graph that explains two different processes, process A and process B. And as you can see, there is the similarity matrix where it shows a match to process A or a process B and so on. So in this case, just by using the feather wings, it was possible to detect two different processes and really kickstart the whole IoT project for this retrofitting application. This clearly demonstrated the ease with which we can start a really complex IoT project just by combining and stacking a few boards together. Very cool. Now, Adi, do you have any other applications you can share? Yeah, sure. Further than moving on, we can talk about a really cool application that we did in-house. So this is a collaboration with the wireless power transfer application. So as you can see, the basic application is monitoring temperature inside a fridge. Here, we come across a really interesting problem that is, Whenever we have a wireless connectivity solution built in inside the fridge, it is impossible for the wireless connectivity link to connect outside the fridge because basically the fridge acts as a Faraday cage. So you don't have a possibility to transmit data from within the fridge to the outside world. So here, what we did interestingly was build a small sensor, which is powered wirelessly using the wireless power transfer. So this is similar to the Qi charging that we use on our mo mobile phones. So what this charging circuit does is in the forward direction, power up the sensor. It also enables the transmission of data with a very low data rate. So as you can see, it's around 500 bit per second in the backward direction, which means the temperature data from within the fridge 
is transferred over the wireless coils on to the wireless receiver. So this was further transmitted over a wireless link onto a gateway. So in this case, a Wi-Fi module acts as a gateway. This gateway basically connects wirelessly onto the local infrastructure and transmits data onto a cloud platform. As you can see, there is a small visualization where we actually visualized a lot of parameters, for example, the efficiency of power transmission in the forward direction, as well as the temperature itself being visualized in the cloud. So this is a really cool example where we can see the synergy between wireless power transfer as well as solve the problem of actually, you know, measuring the temperature within the fridge with this retrofitting solution. So what was the actual result of this application? So we actually deployed this in one of our fridges in a production facility where it was really essential to monitor the temperature within and in order to optimize a couple of processes and eliminate failures that were happening. When we allowed this to run over a week or so, it was really clear that there was a spike in temperature at certain intervals of time. And this was really periodic. This really enabled us to pinpoint exactly the time at which the temperatures dropped, which could actually result in certain failure of processes. So this is how just by having a prototype that is running, it is really easy to demonstrate the impact that we can have over optimizing any process in an industrial setup. Excellent. Well, Adi, this was a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure. When we talk about industrial IoT, so Industry 4.0, we just have to understand that by adding industrial IoT to any application, we can make it a lot smarter. So basically, what we do is connect a few sensors, hook it up with a wireless connectivity solution, bring new data from the field onto the cloud, wherein you can run a lot of different processing of data, presenting the data, even just visualizing the data would actually impact a lot in optimizing the processes of any industrial application. In order to do this, we need a way to accelerate the development process. We just saw that IoT can be really complex. It's a very wide domain, broad domain involving hardware, software, cloud, from low power, low processing domains to high power, high processing capabilities with infinite possibilities. In order to simplify this, it is essential to create a small, tangible, something that is easy to understand, which is where we proposed rapid prototyping. So with help of rapid prototyping, it is possible with almost no hardware effort to bring sensor data from the field onto the cloud, wherein you can already show a lot of advantages, value additions, which enable the users to make important business decisions in order to move on to the bigger IoT projects. So this is how we can demonstrate the value of IoT using simple, easy to use rapid prototyping tools. Excellent. Well, Adi, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you today. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Worth Electronic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.